All right, guys, what is happening? Welcome back to the channel. My God, it is sunny today. So for those of you that follow me on social media, you would have seen a huge update for the YouTube channel. The channel has been monetized. I've been accepted into the YouTube partner program, which is absolutely fantastic. It's definitely what I've been trying to do here on my YouTube channel. But don't worry, nothing actually changes for you guys. It, you're still gonna get the same content and all that kind of stuff. Um, I believe that YouTube has already been showing you guys ads in my videos, so it's just gonna keep doing that. Um, but what I thought I would do to celebrate the achievement or the milestone is showcase all the fun I've had over the last two years here on the YouTube channel, showing you guys my life with inside the automotive kind of area, industry, hobby, I guess. And of course, this is the new house that we moved into um, about four or five weeks ago. Definitely need a bigger shed. The Escort is obviously at the other property. But guys, thank you so much for all the support you've given me over the last two years. Here's to another two years, 10 years, 22 years of doing this whole YouTube thing. Thing. Thanks, guys. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Now I've got a ride on that. What is happening in today's video? We are going to be fitting the carbon fiber steering wheel complete with LED shift lights in the 2020 MK5 Supra. Okay, so there's a lot to get done in today's video. There's a lot to do to make sure you guys know exactly what to do so you don't mess anything up inside of your car. All right, so let's get started and we're going to go step by step. All right, guys, so if you can hear me okay over this exhaust, <laughs> all I did now is I just test fitted the power cable to make sure that it worked. We actually got power, you can see that. And then down here, we've connected in the wireless reader into the OBD2, but we still get a second piece there. So I can still data log and everything when we're at the track. Morning YouTube, what is happening? Welcome back to the channel. This weekend, we are going on a massive road trip in the 2020 Supra. We are doing the Street Machine Drag Weekend Challenge. Let me steady that camera for you. When you see a drag car with a parachute on the back, you know that that is a fast car, all right? But currently, we're just sat here in the staging lanes. Unfortunately, guys, somebody has emptied their contents of their gearbox, the entire contents of their gearbox, down the straight at the actual finish line. So we're going to be hitting anywhere between 180, 200 kilometers an hour by the time we get to the finish line in these two A90s here. All right, so, and some of these other cars are going to be hitting much, much faster than us. My car, yeah, is in my contact. Live it up, life too quick. Ride around my new sh. Eliminate my car, yeah, it is in my contact. Live it up, life too quick. Ride around my new sh. Eliminate my car, yeah, it is in my contact. Back a hole up, just slow up my car, yeah, it is in my contact. So we are just gonna pack up now from day two of racing. Uh, we really didn't race very long at all today because we literally arrived, did three runs, and on the third run got the time slip pretty much as close to um, as I think we're gonna get, okay? So the way this dial your own class works, guys, um, is over the course of the three days, we're gonna set three runs and we're gonna to have to try and match the time as fast as possible, as, as well as possible to um, the original time. It's gonna take our fastest time slip and our slowest time slip, and they're gonna work out the split uh, between the two, okay? So, so far, the fastest time that I did was at uh, Queensland Raceway yesterday, it was 11.797, and today on the eighth mile, um, on the one eighth track, we did um, 7.592, okay? So what they're gonna do is multiply that by 1.555, to get my quarter mile time, which works out to be 11.805 or 8.06 if they're gonna round up, because I was eight, 
zero six or something like that. So that leaves me 0 0.009 away from my quarter mile time from yesterday. This is now day three, okay? We are back here at Willowbank Raceway, uh, Queensland Raceway in Ipswich. You can see right behind me there. I'm right at the start of the strip. I'm gonna try and get some footage for you of some other cars. I've right, got some interesting stuff coming for you today, so keep watching and have a lot of fun. Alright guys, what's happening? So we just did the first run, it was me there. I did take the fan out though. Versus OC. Back there, that's where he finished back there as well guys. OC did an 11.9, which is still incredibly fast um, in today's heat on the stock turbo. And here with the big board Warner with today's heat, um, we did 11.3.9. So that is an absolute wrap for the weekend, okay, in the Dial Your Own class with the 2020 Supra. Um, today when we got to the track, uh, we looked at the times of everybody else and we knew that we weren't actually going to come in, you know, with a chance of first, second or third or something like that. So most of the day uh, we spent just chasing a time, okay, we were chasing high tens. Okay, all right. Come in there. Yeah. Flex. I just want to win. Alright guys, what is happening? Welcome back to the channel. Today we here at Queensland Raceway for general practice. We're going to be driving on the national circuit today. Guys, remember if you have not watched the Drag Weekend video, click up above me there. Watch the Drag Weekend video. See if we get crowned the fastest 2020 Supra in Australia. But here we are at Queensland Raceway for general practice. We're going to be getting stuck in to the national circuit, a track I've not yet done before. But it's alright because we have Dylan from Skid Control. There he is, somewhere over there, standing between the poles. Dylan from Skid Control Professional Racing Instruction. Hello, the guy's buddy here for the rest of the lap. He is actually a good driver and he knows his line. And then I've been taking on the front straight. So that was fun, not 
Well, it was kind of. I got my heart racing, to say the least. Um, so, look, I'm just on the way back from the petrol station now. The fuel light came on. We've done 105 kilometers since filling up. Um, yeah, so I drive pretty hard on the track, all right, as you can see. Um, basically, look, guys, what happened on that turn there is that turn um, closes back on itself. Um, so it's a close, a closed turn as opposed to an open turn. Uh, with these closed turns, right, it turns that come back and close upon themselves. I know you can't see me, it comes back upon itself like that. Uh, with turns like that, you have to turn in late because the turn keeps going. So you have to turn in late. What happened there on that turn is I turned in too early. I turned in um, at like way, way, way too early. And it just started the speed, the track, everything just started sucking me out to the other side of the track. I hit the rumble strips on the other side. I was watching where I wanted to go. Um, I wasn't looking at the wall because I did not want to hit the wall. I was watching where I wanted to go, which was the other side of the track. Coincidentally, um, I corrected the, the skid. The car then spun back round um, and we wound up on the other side of the track. But then I looked at the tire wall so I started going towards the tire wall. Um... I did something, all right? <clears throat> if you guys follow me on social media, you would have already seen it. And if you don't follow me on social media, links are in the description down below. So go and have a look and follow me on social media. But I'm gonna give you a quick walk around of this 2014 180 horsepower turbocharged Fiesta that I bought off Facebook Marketplace. All right, guys, what is happening? Welcome back to the channel. Super excited to see you today. As you can see behind me, we are at Queensland Raceway. four laps on the Clubman today. Uh, we're going off home. There's an oil leak on the car, unfortunately. I thought it was coming from the sump. Took the sump off. I reapplied new gasket seal and all that kind of stuff. Clean it all up. Looked like it sorted it out, but it's actually coming from the crank seal, the crankshaft oil seal. So got to do that before Thursday. Today's, sun, today's Saturday? Yeah, today's Saturday. So I've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 
Wednesday. I need to get it done before Wednesday because the car's going for an alignment and that kind of stuff before uh, time attack on Thursday. So I need to make sure I fix that. Um, Never buy tools off the snap-on truck. Have a guess how much. How much? How much? $85. 85 bucks. Are you kidding me, guys? 85 bucks for this. It is snap-on, I guess, so maybe it'll never break, but but it is the right tool for the right job. Is it? And uh, here is our tired and sad oil seal. This time we have a Mishimoto radiator, so an oversized radiator. Took about another three liters of coolant as well, which is really cool. Before the Mishimoto radiator, guys, the temperature was sitting at about 112 degrees, all right? Um, absolutely came the car, got a PB, and the temperature went only up to 100 degrees. So it's literally 12 degrees cooler from the Mishimoto radiator. So if you're absolutely pushing the limits of your car, definitely need to fit a, a oversized radiator. Like I said to you at the start of the video, we took about an extra three liters. All right, so I'm in the, the car park of the, the shopping center. I'll show you. There's like everything. And I've taken up like one, two, three, four, five, six, six parking bays. So it was the battery was flat. It hadn't dropped a cell. It just said it needed to be charged, which is really strange because the battery's fully disconnected and sits on trickle charge with a charger that's rated for that battery as well. So maybe there's something wrong with my charger, but <clears throat> the guy was like, oh, it just needs a recharge. I was like, dude, I don't have time. I've got to go to the racetrack. I've got to race. The car started fine this morning when I put it on the trailer. And like, that was kind of it. And he was like, oh, well, we can't really exchange it. I'm gonna go talk to my manager and see what we can pull off. He comes back 30 seconds later and he's like, good news, manager's willing to change the battery for you. So massive, massive shout out to Super Cheap Auto in Kumra. Guys, so <clears throat> that was the day's racing. It was super eventful, so uh, didn't have a trailer in the morning, got a trailer, flat battery in the race car for some reason, even though the battery was new, and I'm shouting because I'm on the side of the motorway here in Australia. Um, got the battery changed, thanks so much, Super Cheap Auto. Had a day racing. It was an okay day, didn't set any PBs, but... Oh, guys, let me show you. Let me show you what happened here. All that being said, this Ranger Raptor Beautiful vehicle to tow with, absolutely great. Trailer, on the other hand, a wheel has fallen off. And it's like, that's gone, man. Do you think he's gonna reverse back up the street or make me walk down there? Together? I think he'll come back. I don't think he's coming back. Maybe let's take a walk. So it's been four and a half months, actually. I thought it was three months, but it's four and a half months since I sold the Supra and bought the, the Escort. So I sold a 500 horsepower Supra. Mine is 125, 130 horsepower Ford Escort from Northern Ireland. There you go. So we are here, the keys. The Escort RS Turbo here. In Australia, at last, I am so happy with how clean it is. All right, guys, what is happening? Simo here, welcome back to the channel and another episode, as you can see, Behind me, the Escort RS Turbo is roaring on the driveway. I'm off to Queensland Transport today to actually register the vehicle. So I'm not sure how this is gonna go because I've never registered a import vehicle in Australia before. I'm pretty sure I've got all the paperwork though. It's past its roadworthy. It's been approved for import. Um, 
got the mod plate, got the paperwork for the mod plate and all that kind of stuff. Central locking from 1988. Boss. Is this the key? Yeah, that's the key. Oh, mate. Just done rego, um, paid the stamp duty and all that kind of stuff on the car. I don't want to say how much it was, but it's a good job I've been putting money away to pay the stamp duty on this car. These guys want to know what the dump valve sound was like out of 10 for you. What is it? What was it, it like? It sounds so fun. I yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 out of 10. Guys, this sound takes me back. Hopefully you can hear it in the car or in, on the camera anyway. I feel like I'm back in the year 2000. These guys want to know what the dump valve sound was like out of 10 for you. What is it? What was it, it like? so fun. I yeah, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, guys. Got the wing on the Fiesta now. I'll go around the back and show you guys. I know you've seen it before, but we'll have a look pretty aggressive looking they all laugh at me because i claim it's a stock fiesta it's stock powered but it's very much not stock as you can see so guys new track today not race this one and um, i've got a buddy that raced at a45 amg here and he did a 62 seconds and he's challenged me to beat his time but uh his top speed here was also 235 k's an hour and i've never seen that speed in the fiesta so i don't think it's like i'm going to beat his lap time one minute 5.8 Guys, what is happening and this is race day we are here this is also the intro of the video and unfortunately guys it's also the outro so we changed the uh pads and rotors pads and discs yesterday and unfortunately i didn't have time to do a brake fluid change so i just went with the old brake fluid which was a mistake uh as as we could have kind of guessed but i was just hoping that it would be okay um and uh, third lap. I mean, I took the car for a little spin last night, bed the brakes in a bit, uh, went out this morning, did a couple of warm up laps, and then um, wait for the loudspeaker. All right, all right, we get it. He wants group B. Bravo, orange pit lane, if you didn't hear. Um, yeah, so car's back on the trailer now. Took it out this morning um, for a couple of warm up laps just to help bed the brakes in and stuff like that. And um, yeah, seems like that was okay. I mean, the brakes, they're nice. See, there's no paint left on the rotor, no paint left on the rotor or anything like that. You know, they're good, but they were smoking um, after like three laps as well. And then the pedal went all the way to the floor. Um, I reckon because I didn't change brake fluid uh, that it's going to be that I'm boiling the brake fluid because the pads are a harder compound than what I had last time as well. So they're going to be running hotter. Um, so yeah, I think that's what it is. But guys, today's video is because I have sold one of these two cars behind me. Um, it's either the Fiesta or the Escort RS Turbo. Um, I've had numerous people contact me about both cars for the last... Oh, 
12, I'm going to say 12 months because I've had the Escort 12 months. But even the Fiesta, people have been contacting me about that um, since I got it almost two years ago, asking to buy it. I've had offers in the region of 10 grand for the Fiesta and I've offers in the region of over $50,000 for the Escort. That's a lot of money for that car. And then I'm not gonna say that I haven't been tempted um, and I'm not gonna say that I have been tempted um, to, to take that $50,000 price tag for that because uh, the reality is I only paid about $30,000 for it. Um, obviously that was import fees and stuff like that and it came to close to 40 grand. Last drive. So I've been super busy on the car, got this side off the uh, lower control arm, and um, I'll come back to that in a sec. All the way around this other side. And got this lower control arm off um, as well. So taking all this out as well, and I'll just open the boot up for you. Car's pretty clean. I'm pretty happy with it so far. There's a little bit in the just make sure the boot doesn't fall on my head. Boot struts are 30 something years old. So there's a little bit in here and, and that's fairly normal. I guess you can consider that the spare wheel has been sat in there and it just moves over time and rubs and on the paint, the paint wears away, a bit of corrosion. All right, let's have a look. I don't like my chances on this side. Right, guys so here it is my brand new second hand 2013 Toyota FJ Cruiser now I know I've got a lot of guys and girls that watch my channel from the UK you guys did not get this vehicle in the UK so I'm gonna give you a rundown of it but it's basically a Land Cruiser Prado um, or like the Land Cruiser 150 120 150 chassis with a brick for a body. Look at that. Do, 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 do. Have some of that. Happy with that. Gotta be happy with that. Leaves heaps of space here now that the ABS is removed and this is why we left the ABS off because from here the dump pipe's gonna come back down through there which is where the ABS sat on the car. Don't need that. Uh, it's a 34, 35 year old car. Who the fuck wants ABS anyway? So yeah, pretty good. So as you saw, the engine's back in, really happy with that. There's still heaps and heaps and heaps to work through, including the custom wiring loom, um, the brake system, all that sort of stuff. And of course, changing out that front panel. Um, I am going to be changing the engine mounts as well. And again, I do know it would have been easier to do it all at when the engine was out, but um, should be able to just lift the engine up a little bit and change one mount at a time. Um, so that's basically how i'm going to do that but it all comes down to money and shipping things over from the uk as well guys so um like i say as always if you're still here watching at the end of the video then it means you definitely like what you're watching and if you aren't subscribed and you haven't hit the bell to get notifications then you really should be doing that by now thanks guys and i'll catch you in the next video